Okay, hello once again, fellow flight simmers. As promised, here's part 3 of the new SimVim X plugin version 2.0 and above in the new way of doing the custom uh, conversions in the new configurator. This is by far going to be the longest one of the, of the three parts. Um, but I'm also at the same time, I'm not going to go into every step of the way of how to do um, a custom conversion, you know, how to find out which of your custom parameters that you need to, or your custom commands or data refs that you need to put in there. If you want to get all those details, go back and watch my older video about how to use a custom converter. Just keep in mind that the, the part where you actually go into to clicking, you know, convert is going to be different because now this is the way that it's done now. But the way to find out you know what parameters you need and what the values are that you're going to need and all that which i'm going to show here anyways but i'm not going to show you how i got them um you can go back and watch that video okay okay so before we go any further um let's go back to the website and assuming that you have already watched parts one and two um you know you already know that you have to use simvim x version 2.0 or above in order for you to do this what i'm about to show you today Okay, so for the purposes of this video, I'm going to pretend that we're going to build a completely brand new data file or that you already have this data file with these particular parameters in it, but you need to convert them as is my case for the Cessna 172 by Airfoil Labs. Because we already know from all my previous videos that there's a lot of things on the Cessna 172 that don't work by default, so we have to create custom conversions. All right, so before we go any further, I'm just going to show you this text file that I made because these are the ones we're going to put. So we're going to do autopilot command. We're going to do the uh, indicated airspeed, uh, true airspeed knob. We're going to do the AH pitch reference, the alternate static valve, the engine mixture, and the fuel tank selector switch. So those are the ones that we're going to be using. and. Uh, you know, right here I wrote whether it's a command or a data ref. And if it's a data ref, I put the value of the data ref and the steps that it needs to take. So, like I said, once again, I already talked about all that in that other video, uh, which I'll try to remember to post the link down below so that you can watch the whole long video if you need to, okay? So, first thing we're going to add, let's see. Uh, we're going to start a new configuration file, so we're going to go to the Cessna 172. And if we're going to start at the top, then we need to go to the autopilot. And we need to put autopilot command, the switch. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it right here. And then the next one is the true airspeed adjustment knob. So for that one, we do need to go to the planes. And we need to go down here to this part. And it'll be this encoder right here. Well, we're going to pretend that we have an encoder. All right, so we'll put that one right there. Uh, the next one is the AH pitch reference, which is this little encoder here. And we're going to do the rotary knob. We'll just put that one right there. And then we're going to do the alternate static valve, which we need to go back to the plane again. And it's this one right here. I'll just put it right below that one. Then the engine mixture. Engine mixture right here. We'll just put that one right. Uh, just put it right there just to give it a space. And then finally the fuel tank selector switch. So that one we're just going to put right here. Okay. So now that we got all, all our assignments. Let's just go ahead and save the configuration file. Just so that something happens at least we don't lose all our work right okay so now we're going to pretend that we already know that for this particular airplane none of these keywords work so now we have now that we have a data file in here now that we have at least one assignment you see that the conversion button turned green so we're going to go ahead and do that and since we don't have any planes yet that we have converted for you know there's nothing here so we need to add a new plane and right here you need to enter the actual folder name of where the airplane is located okay so on this laptop i don't have xplane installed so i don't actually have it but i do know that i believe the 
the folder for the airfoil lab Cessna 172 is called something like this. So I'm going to pretend that I copied and pasted the name of that folder because that's what you need to do. Okay. And since for this one, we don't have an old configuration file that we were, that we were going to transfer. We're just going to add the airplane. Okay. So now that we add the airplane and remember, I mentioned it before on the other parts that if you have multiple airplanes, you need to make sure that you have highlighted the particular airplane that you try to do the conversions for. Otherwise, you're going to be applying them to a different airplane. And of course, they're probably not going to work. So right now, if we had already converted some things, we can see we can click view. And right here, you would get a list of everything that's converted already. But since we don't have anything converted yet, it's empty. So after you add the plane here, you go ahead and click out of there. And now when you go here, you see that you get the option to convert. So we can go ahead and hit convert and this is the one for the autopilot so if we go back to our little thing here I'm gonna cheat just to make it faster but we can see that this is a command and this is the command right here so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it then I'm gonna come over to my other screen again and it's a command so I'm gonna go ahead and paste it right there and that's it now we just confirm it Okay, so now we're going to go to the second one here, the true airspeed adjustment knob. So we're going to go ahead and convert. And if we go back to our note here, uh, we can see that that is a data ref, which is this one here. And the value is going to be 0 to 100, and the step is 0.25. So we got to remember that. So we'll go ahead and copy this right here. Go back over to this other one and paste it in there. And then, so increment by this value, remember, is 0.25. That's what um, we call the step. And then the optional limits, this is going to be 0, 100. So you need to have a comma separated, you know, whatever the minimum and maximum value is. And the cool thing about this is that they have already pretty much every type of data ref or command or whatever, they already have the fields that are necessary because that particular type of function can have only certain things. So if it doesn't need them, you won't see these options. If it does, you'll see them. So th there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes for all this to work so flawlessly. It's just simply amazing. Okay, so now we got all the, all the things in there. So we'll go ahead and confirm. I still haven't figured out what the arrays, uh, when you have data refs that have arrays, um, like a lot of values I haven't figured out how to work with them but thankfully I don't think I have needed to so we don't put nothing in there all right so go ahead and confirm that one um, the next one is gonna be the AH pitch reference so we'll hit convert we'll come over to our note here and we can see that this is a, a data ref and it's for that and the value is negative 1 to 1 and the step is 0 0.01 so we got to remember that so negative 1 to 1 step 0 0.01 so we'll go back over here paste that value in there it's a data ref uh, 0 0.01 is a step and negative 1 comma 1 is the op the limit maximum and minimum values so we can go ahead and convert that and then I think we have this one here the alternate static error valve we'll hit convert and we'll go over to our little list and that is also a data ref so we'll copy it and the value is either 0 or 1 because this is just an on and off switch so we'll go back over here and paste it in there and it's 0 or 1 and confirm okay and then what do we have the oh the mixture so the engine 1 mixture it's a data ref so we'll go back to our little list over here and it is a data ref so we'll copy that out 
and the value is 0 to 1. It's not 0 or 1, it's from 0 to 1. Alright, so go back to that other screen. Paste it in there. And the range is going to be 0, 1. Alright, and, and it tells you right there that it has to be two values and they're comma separated. So they actually give you all the hints that you need for the values that you need to look for. Alright, so we'll go ahead and put that in there. And the last one we have is the tank, fuel tank select switch. So this one, this one is actually kind of uh, interesting. Because if we go to our to our list here, you can see that it has uh, 172 com fuel tank right and com to fuel tank left. So it's like if it's a left and right commands, it's, you know, it's not up and down, kind of like the way it says it over here, but it's the same thing. It's instead of being up and down, it's left and right. You, so you're going to select that one and you're going to paste that in there. So, oops, I never copied it, huh? Well, I guess I better go back and make sure I copy it then. I just highlighted it, but I never copied it. So I'll go back over here and paste it in there. And then I'm just going to paste it again, but the other one is left. It's not right. So that's it. And, and actually, you notice how it automatically already knows that there's a data ref for the position of the switch and it also has a, a, a thing for a center value you know so if we go back to our little thing over here you can see that I do have a data ref because it needs to have that in order to work properly so go ahead and copy that and you can see that there's a value of negative one zero or one and the center position is zero and the index is one if you need that so now we go back over here and we can put in the data ref and then the index is one and the center position is zero so you see what i mean that everything that you need they have already put the fields in here for um and uh this was here like that since a long time ago when i started trying to work with the cessna 172 so it is super amazing all right, so that's it. So now we got them all converted. So now I'm going to I'm going to do something real quick and show you. Uh remember I saved um I saved the data file, right? Before. So if we look at that data file, you can see that all it has is the the five uh, parameters that I saved, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the configurator now. Okay, so now that we did the conversion, if we go back to the conversion tab and we can put view, we can see that it shows you the parameters that have been converted, right? But we still haven't saved the configuration file again. So we need to make sure we save it or else all that work that we just did is going to be lost. So we're going to save it under the same name, overriding the previous one that didn't have the conversions, okay? And now if we go back over to, to this here, and we look at the data file again now you can see that we have a conversion section right here and you have all the parameters that you converted right there um, so basically what it is uh, this is the folder name of the aircraft that you that you selected this is the keyword you know of the of the of that particular parameter and then this is what you put in as the conversion so each one of them will be divided by one of these vertical bars and then that'll be the next one. So at least I am so happy that at least now we have an, an idea of what to look for. Like if we want to, if we ever wonder, did we ever convert this particular keyword or that parameter, we can at least come in here and read it because before, I'm not sure if you guys ever noticed, but before, if you were to look at the, at the conversion files, this is what they used to look like. So this is the old conversion file that I that I converted over on the previous video to the new format. So we couldn't even tell. So even if you wanted to go in there and and see if you had already converted something or what was the the parameters, the custom commands or data refs that you put in there, there would be no way to find out. 
Um, you could do it inside the configurator, but you couldn't do it just by looking at the text file. So I am actually super happy that they did it this way in this particular version of it. And I really hope that it stays this way. Um, so that's it. You know, now, you know, if you ever play around with it or you ever need to go back and you need to see like, well, you know, this button's not working. You can just click on whichever one you want, hit the convert button, and then you can try a different command or different data ref if it's not working for you. Okay, so I think for now, that's all I need to show about this. Um, like I said, the steps are on the website, step-by-step -step instructions. That's the way I learned how to do this. And they are very, very good instructions. I got to say, man, those, those guys, they really do put a lot of effort into making sure that they try to give the clearest, uh, most legible instructions that they can come up with. You know, but I understand that for some people, you know, they read that and it still doesn't make any sense. So that's the reason why I make these videos. But I just want you guys to remember, um, I, you know, I don't, I'm not a spokesperson for them. I'm not part of the team. I'm just a user, just like everyone else here. And I'm just pr making these videos according to the way I understand this subject matter. You know, so if I do say something that's out of place or it's wrong, you know, like I said before, I'm only human and I'm sorry, but I try my best to give you the most accurate information in these videos, all right? So hopefully this will help you guys get get started or, or get going, <laughs> continue, uh, you know, making your conversions. I was wanting to convert some more things for the, the Piper uh, Twin Comanche uh, that I had started, but I couldn't because all of a sudden the custom conversion and everything was gone. So I'm really happy that it didn't take that long for it to come back online. And now I'm going to continue doing whatever I need to convert. All right. Well, that's it for this video, man. Thank you guys very much. And hope you guys have a happy new year. And I think my next video will be next year. See you next time.